What's up guys, welcome to my tutorial series on web scraping. So in this tutorial, we're just gonna do some really basic web scraping. We're just gonna scrape one page. Uh, and in this case, it's the IMDB uh, top 25 or top 50 adventure movies. But before we get started, I wanna have you guys download the Selector Gadget Chrome extension. I'll have a link to this in the description, but essentially it gives you the CSS tag for different elements on web pages. And you're gonna need that in order to actually web scrape those elements from, uh, from the page. Then you can go ahead and navigate to whatever site you're trying to web scrape, uh, and we can start writing some code in R. So we're first gonna load in the two libraries that we'll be using, rvest, which is for the web scraping part, and dplyr, which allows us to do this cool thing called piping, which I'll explain in a bit. But if you don't have these libraries installed, you just need to run these two lines, uh, install.packages and then rvest or dplyr. Make sure that you do those in quotes. Cool. So we'll load in those two libraries, and then we are gonna actually create a new variable for our link. So I'll go ahead and copy this. And we're also gonna write page equals read HTML link. Now I'll explain what this command does in a sec, but essentially it just gets the HTML code from this web page. Awesome, so from this, uh, like I mentioned, we're gonna scrape the name, the year, the rating, and the synopsis. Uh, we're first gonna start by creating the name column. So we're gonna make a variable called name, and that's gonna use this HTML code that we just fetched, and it's gonna feed that into the HTML nodes function. Uh, and then this is where the Chrome uh, selector gadget comes in handy. So we're gonna go back to our page, we're going to click on this icon in the top right, that's actually the selector gadget tool. And now when we move our mouse around the window, you'll see different things starting to highlight. So we just want to grab the titles for now. So we'll click on one of the titles, and you notice that a lot of text turns yellow. Since we only want the titles, we need to deselect everything that's not the title. So in order to deselect, you just click again. So I clicked on number of votes because that was yellow, and now it turns out red. And uh, selector gadget really quickly figured out that I only want the titles. So that's what it's highlighted for me. And I know that there, there are 50 of them on this page and there's a 50 right here. So I know that that's the right number. So we should be good to go. But you might be in a situation where you need to deselect multiple things. And if that's the case, just, just go ahead and keep doing that. Great, so once we get this tag, we can copy it to our clipboard and paste it in our HTML nodes function. Now we just need to pipe that one result into HTML text. So I'll give you a quick explanation of, uh, of what these rvest commands do and also what this pipe operator is in case you've never seen it before. So the first rvest command that we're using is read HTML. And essentially what it does is given a URL, it gives you back an HTML document or the source code for that rather. We're then calling the HTML node functions with the CSS selector and this will, uh, given the HTML source code, pull out the actual elements that we want to grab. But even after that, you have to call HTML text because there will still be the, uh, the link tags for the movies, for example, around the names of the movies. So HTML text will actually parse the text from within those tags. And then the pipe operator is this uh, percent greater than percent. It's part of the dplyr library and essentially it makes coding really easy in R. Uh, if you haven't used it before, I'd highly recommend using it all the time or whenever you can. But in this example, if you have a as a vector of one, two, three, and you call a pipe mean, that's the same thing as calling mean a. So uh, it takes everything that's to the left of the pipe, it computes that, and it takes the result and passes it in as the first argument to the function that's after the pipe. So pretty easy, super useful. Great, so now that we've written the code for the name column, we can go ahead and run this. And if I see what the output for name is, it looks pretty good. It has all of our movie titles. Cool, so now I wanna grab the year. So we're gonna do something very similar where we call HTML nodes and we have to go back to Chrome, clear our selection from uh, selector gadget. And now I just need to select the years. You'll see that it also selected the number and I don't want that, so I'm gonna click there. And now it's selected something else and I don't want that, so click there. And there, it's gotten all the years. So copy that tag. 
plug it into HTML nodes and grab the text. If we run that line and output the years, that gives us exactly what we want, which is perfect. We just have two more. We're going to grab the rating. So again, go back to selector gadget, uh, make sure that we get rid of the stuff we don't want and we get our ratings. Grab our text. And then the last thing is getting the synopses of all these movies. So click once for the synopsis, deselect, and there we go. So synopsis. Paste it in, grab the text. Cool. So I know that the names and the year is right. I just want to confirm that the rating and synopses are right. So let me go ahead and run those lines. Rating looks good. And synopsis also looks good. So I'd recommend just running these lines as you um as you go ahead and start, or as you go ahead and do your scraping, because sometimes the tag that Selector Gadget gives you isn't always right. And uh, I'll actually address this in a future tutorial, how, how you can go about um, other ways of getting those tags. But uh, just, yeah, I just go ahead and keep debugging as you, as you write your code. All right, so now we have our uh, four variables, and we're going to treat these as columns for our data frame. And in order to make that data frame, we're just going to call the data.frame command and plug in the name, the year, the rating, the synopsis. And I'm also gonna throw in another argument in there called strings as factors and set that to false. I think by default, this is true. And essentially what that does is it makes, uh, when it's true, it makes all of your, your columns into factors instead of characters or numeric or whatever else they should be. So uh, just watch out for that. We can run this. Now we can view our movies data frame and you can see just in a few lines, we got all the text from our IMDB page into a data frame. And just the last thing I'll show you is how do you, uh, what if you want to save this as a CSV file? It's super easy. We're just going to set our working directories to our source files and then uh, write.csv movies, the variable name, and then the name of the file that we want it to be called. So movies.csv, we can run that. And it looks like our movies.csv file is generated just like we want. Uh, so that pretty much wraps up this tutorial. I'll definitely go more in depth into future videos, into the, the next videos in the series. Um, we'll touch on how to go into individual pages. Uh, what happens if you have multiple pages of results? Like in this case, there's a lot more than 50 movies. There are a thousand of them. So what if we wanted to scrape all of them? Uh, and then again, like what if selector gadget doesn't give you the right CSS tag? What can you do about that? So uh, definitely check out those videos if you're interested. And if you have any feedback, feel free to leave a comment below. But other than that, thank you and I'll see you in the next video.